But anyway, here's another one. This is a letter. Well, this is a, a it's multiple things. I'm not going to read all of Tammy's response, but you remember Tim Knoll down in, in Richmond, Virginia, right? Of course. He was friends with Dave Lane. Yeah, longtime fan. Well, he apparently had posted on AOL.com back when they did these <laughs> things. You know, well, it was, it was a message board or whatever they called them back then. Yeah. And it's the wrestling news. Sonny was here in Richmond today doing radio and public appearances on our local sports radio show. She went off on Sable after host Big Al Coleman asked about his female guest from WWF back in May when they were here for In Your House. Sonny said something. This is in November 1997. Sonny said something to the effect of, she's got no charisma, can't talk or manage, is Miss Anti-Personality, and no one in WWF likes her. Al then commented that she never removed her sunglasses during the appearance, and Sonny said, that's so you can't look in her eyes and see what an empty head she's got. <laughs> she went on to say that Sable only had a job due to saline. Wow. She ran down the card for Richmond on November 21st and told everyone to go get popcorn during Mark Marrow's match. Wow. Uh, she did also talk about how uh, uh, she at one time wanted to be a pediatrician, how she broke her hand in Smoky Mountain Wrestling and about being scarred due to an errant chair shot from Kevin Sullivan. She also said, and I really like this, that she really misses managing at ringside and gets tired of these promo tours. Well, there you go. So, there and, you and go. that's, and that's what it was. Cause it, you know, so then here's the letter, November 17, 1997 from Jim Ross to Tammy. Dear Tammy. The enclosed AOL posting was faxed to me Sunday, November 16, 1997. I spoke with our market rep who verified this information, re your comments about Sable to be accurate to the best of his knowledge. After our discussion in Cornwall at TV on November 11, so the week before this happened, he had just had a talk with her in Ontario at a TV taping about Tammy. You got to calm down with the Sable and the Goodwill Ambassador role and the blah, blah, blah. He says, after our discussion, I thought you understood what the company expects of you in this Goodwill Ambassador role and that I specifically instructed you not to communicate your personal feelings regarding Sable to the media or the public. I'm very disappointed this occurred. After our discussion, we'll be in touch with you soon further to discuss this matter and your future in the WWF, which wasn't very long after that. She wrote him a three-page letter. I'm not going to read all of this. but it, I Oh, mean, come on. I, well, Jr. first and foremost, I would like to say I understand your concerns about my personal feelings and comments toward Rena Merrow. Per our discussion, I hope you understand the reasonings behind my feelings. The direction of my comments is not based on jealousy or envy, rather on dedication and true concern for the welfare of this business that we are all lucky enough to be involved in and make a living from. Because basically she said, what the fuck? She's the shits. But now here she buries me. <laughs> You know my knowledge and growth in this business came from none other than Jim Cornette and the way wrestling used to be and the way you like it. <laughs> Therefore, I do believe Mrs. Mero is not exactly the image a woman should be portrayed or utilized. I also believe that I put my heart and soul in everything I do, whereas I know from personal comments of hers that she's in it for the stardom alone. I do have a great problem with that, and that is why I find myself speaking of her in a demeaning way. And that was true. Sable actually came out and said, oh, I just, I'm doing this to be on TV. But she says, on the other hand, I've learned to understand the World Wrestling Federation does not adhere to the values of the old school of wrestling. And I feel I've come a long way in adjusting to these new sports entertainment ethics. Uh, skipping huh. ahead a little bit. In saying that, I must now admit that I've been wrong in expressing how I feel about her in public. And for that, I apologize. I will from now on swallow my pride and even go to the extent of putting her over on interviews to continue in my role as what you call a goodwill ambassador. Now onto the subject of the Richmond radio interview, uh, the extremely exaggerated review by Mr. Tim Knoll. <laughs> <laughs> because every day she used to tell me every time an interview begins, the first thing they ask is what will you be doing there? Sadly, I have nothing or shattering to say. The second thing they ask is, who's your rival in the WWF? I always say, I don't have a rival. I'm in a class of my own. <laughs> and then this particular DJ persisted in stirring up the fact that I've said things about Rena in the past. And apparently she was pressed to say these things. 
Uh, the AOL statement was all a one-hour promo condensed into one paragraph. And you must take, this is great. <laughs> Talking about what she said about Sable, you must take into consideration that I specifically avoided comments about the wrinkles, the Sharpay puppy skin, etc. Because <laughs> that's, oh, God damn it, Sable went ballistic when she said she's got more wrinkles than a Sharpay puppy. Uh, the saline was also a shot at myself. I admitted I've had implants. But when asked what the difference was between us, instead of saying how I truly feel, I stated that she had more saline than me. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm being treated unfairly in the, and then also also in the past three years there have been many occurrences where I've been personally and verbally attacked by Hunter Hearst Helmsley, Shawn Michaels to name a few not just on some local radio interview but on national television these have gone unnoticed and unaddressed and I bitched for months to get it resolved this is called a <laughs> double standard she's not wrong when Sean blatantly inferred in a live interview as having an affair with Bret Hart, everyone was worried about what Bret's family thought. Not one word was mentioned to me about how it affected mine. True. Uh, if you did not know, this can be construed as a form of slander and sexual harassment. And also, where did she get to the point of the... Uh, hold on, there's some... She's right it. about that. Yeah, well, she is. Yeah. Um being the youngest person in this company and female, it's extremely difficult to make every person happy. It seems that to me that the boys making sexual connotations at my expense is a lot more serious than me stating that someone is only good for standing in the corner of her man. And then she brings up, I understand you were not in the office position you were in now when other horrible things occurred to me. I forgot to mention the three and a half weeks of hell I spent in Germany, the ver verbal abuse, the feces in my food. I'm sure you heard all about it. And uh, blah, 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 and three paragraphs of closing nicely. <laughs> you know, forget about the way everything happened since. And, you know, we currently know what situation she's in. But if you go back in time and look at that, is she right about the fact that there's a double standard? I mean, look at we all heard the stories, and here she is in the letter saying that these things happen with the feces and the food and everything and this horrible European tour. Is she right? I mean, they're ready to send her a note and send her home, and everyone else got away with it. Yes. They're well, well, because here's the thing. Once she starts being herself, a lot of the guys, ah, this bitch, will fuck with her. Well, but the problem is, she was the only girl. It wasn't like it is now where there's girls and guys. So she had no backup uh, amongst, uh, you know, on her side, because all the guys thought she was a bitch. So they're shitting in the lunchbox or they're doing whatever the fuck and saying whatever the fuck. And did she have a part to play in it by being, you know, the, the, uh, getting the attitude she had? Yes. In Smoky Mountain, she had a regular bitchy attitude that was fine and dandy because it was 16 guys. Everybody knew each other. You were in the same locker room with the same eight people every night, and it was a territory. It was like a special a special gifted kids class where everybody gets personal attention. But now you're in a locker room with 50 or 60 wrestlers, and they're going all over the fucking world, and it's a goddamn big business. And it's not cute there when one of the talents, even if they are talent, needs special attention, and the guys team up and fucking make sure to persecute that person to make them miserable because that's fun on the road. And so then she'd have to call the office and blah, blah, blah. They didn't do it to Sable because as I've mentioned so many times, Sable was an undercover cunt. She sat in the room. She spoke to Mark Marrow. She was polite to everybody, but she didn't mix in anybody's business and she didn't do whatever. Tammy had a personality and she was going to fucking talk to everybody. And that meant she was going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. And and that is it's and she had the same thing going on I had with shit stain. She's over there going, wait a minute. I can manage. I can promo. I'm the most downloaded celebrity on the internet. I have a fairly good working knowledge of the wrestling business, both in terms of psychology and its history. And then here's this fucking 
plastic, surgically enhanced woman, 10 years older than me, with no personality, can't promo, can't work, can't fucking manage, and knows jack all of shit about the wrestling business, and they're giving her all this attention instead of me because Vince and Vince are in love with her. And there it became. It was the same thing with me and Shitstain. I'm over here with goddamn experience, knowledge, and talent, and he's over there with his buggy whip arms and his beady eyes and his fucking bro. What the fuck? So you naturally, the people like that, great upon each other. But that was her thing. She wanted to manage. She wanted to be in the wrestling business. She was doing neither. She was getting a big head. She was rubbing people the wrong way. There was, especially when they went overseas back in those days, Jim Ross wasn't even in the position at that point in time, but they were, you know, that's why a lot of goofy shit happened overseas because they had less supervision. And But then Tammy didn't do herself any favors after this, and after they, they gave me to her or her to me so that I could try to avoid her getting heat with the rest of the office. I approved all of her expenses on the road and all that shit, and I'd have to call her up and say, Tammy, I know Chris was in the room with you, and there's no way you ate a 14 fucking egg white omelet, so we're not paying 80-something dollars in 1997 for your breakfast at the Marriott. Uh keep it reasonable and I'll fucking push it through, but make it look at least good. Work with me. Shit like that. You know, but the then, well, and that, that's just at, at that point, then she got too big for her britches and I couldn't, you know, do much about that in covering up for all the heat she was getting on herself. Yeah. No one ever looks at that Bret Hart promo from the sunny perspective. When Shawn Michaels says that Brett's having sunny days, everyone always thinks about Brett. Everyone always thinks about Brett's wife hearing that. No one ever thinks about Sonny who... And especially since it wasn't happening, it was happening from the fucking guy that was right. running his mouth. Right. She wasn't fucking Bret Hart. She was fucking Todd Pettengill. All right, now, come on. PLJ. But anyway, nobody ever says that. No. Nobody, well, nobody ever said that, but nobody ever <laughs> said what was it like the other way. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Jim, perhaps... One is a Todd Pettengill, and one doesn't appreciate whatever it may have been in the car, whatever car it may have been, a hand on the lap, a hand on the hand. You know, she, she actually, Sonny, at one time, she trained to be a magician. They were driving down the road. She touched Todd's leg. He turned into a motel. Well, perhaps he never came back out of that motel, and his <laughs> wife wants to sue. Well, in that case, I know exactly who Mrs. Petting Zoo should call. The man, the myth, the legend, the king of West Virginia himself. Call Stephen P. Folks, I've got some big news here about the state of West Virginia and Stephen P. News' influence upon it. Do you realize, Brian, you've heard about this, but the folks have not, that the West Virginia governor, old Governor Jim Justice, who apparently was Sid's second cousin, what about old ben? Sid Justice. What about Ben Justice? And ben Justice, and it was partners with the Stomper. I think Ben Justice was Governor Jim Justice's father. Anyway, the governor of West Virginia, whose name is really Jim Justice, what a gimmick, has issued a state of emergency in the state of West Virginia because he just heard the bad news that Stephen P. New is now representing people on behalf, or against, rather, the state of West Virginia. They have declared a state of emergency because West Virginia heard that Stephen P. New was coming for him. Did you hear about this? You've heard about this. I've heard all about this, yeah. Folks, I'm telling you, if I'm lying, I'm flying, and my feet have not left the ground, the governor has declared a state of emergency for all the jails in the state of West Virginia because a letter has been sent to the state indicating that Stephen P. New and his educated and illustrious minions 
will be suing on behalf of over 300 inmates who are living now in not only overcrowded but deplorable conditions in jail. And I got to tell you, that's a joke that writes itself. If you can find more deplorable conditions than the normal ones in West Virginia, they would only be in a fucking jail in West Virginia. <laughs> Contaminated food, lack of plumbing and water, inadequate medical care, rampant gang attacks, and that's just at the local Tudor's Biscuit World. When you get into the jails, it's even worse. And there is a federal lawsuit that is about to get filed on behalf of those inmates who are being fed slop and hooey, who are not being given access to running water, who they don't have enough in or enough guards to staff these jails. It's overcrowding and understaffing. There's a big problem about it. It's been covered in all the newspapers and quite a few of the radio stations in West Virginia, all three of them, as a matter of fact. And no, I'm just kidding about the fine folks in West Virginia. But apparently, they pay the correctional officers in West Virginia like caca compared to the surrounding states. And the staffing shortage and mandatory overtime has led to issues like burnout from the staffing. But apparently, it's also led to issues like starving the inmates and depriving them of their toilet time and things like that. So that's something else. Another segment of the drown, drown totted, <laughs> the downtrodden pop, not, or the drown totted. You can drown in one of those hot toddies. The downtrodden that Stephen P. New takes care of. The, it, it, can't, it doesn't just have to be the rich, successful folks. It's, it's really, you measure a man, Brian, you've heard this before, by how they take care of and interact with the least of those in our society. And it's the least that he can do, Stephen P. New, to try to help these poor people have some food and water and occasionally a place to poop that, uh, that is sanitary and up to standards. That's just one of the many things. Many. That new law office, many. One new of the many. Just one. Com, one, of the, one of the great many. Newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. Have you been wrong, wrongly terminated? Have you been damaged or injured by negligence on the part of someone else? Have you been locked up in jail and you weren't given your proper food and plumbing and access to, I don't know, recreation and all the things that you, whatever the case, if somebody's pissed you off and done you wrong, call Stephen P. New. He'll be a part of it. And we've mentioned over the last several weeks he is spreading out to all kinds of states. I don't even have the list of states here in front of me. But Louisiana is on that list, and Ohio, and Tennessee, and a great variety of others. The Stephen P. New and NewLawOffice.com branching out worldwide, countrywide. If you got rotten food for your last uh, dinner in jail, then call Stephen P. New or any other reason. He'll find some way or another to get you paid. Stephen P. New, newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. And Governor Justice, the gavel of justice, is coming down upon you.